Using the NRF24L01 transceiver modules, you can monitor and control different processes. You can either use a pair of the long-range NRF24L01 PA plus LNA transceiver modules or you can use a pair of the short-range NRF24L01 transceiver modules. You can also make a pair by using the NRF24L01 PA plus LNA with a regular small size NRF24L01 transceiver module. In my last video tutorial, I used a pair of the long-range NRF24L01 PA plus LNA transceiver modules for controlling the RC jet plane. I was able to control the up, down and left, right movement of the RC plane. I was also able to control the speed of the brushless DC motor. So in this tutorial, I'm going to use this small NRF24L01 module as the transmitter and I will use the NRF24L01 PA plus LNA as the receiver. PCB boards used in this project are sponsored by the PCBA company. Only $5 for 10 PCBs and $30 in total for 20 PCBs assembly. Besides this, PCBA also provides a great variety of services including aluminum PCB, rigid flex, metal core, flexible, high frequency, high TG, thick copper, HDI and LED PCBs. The sign up process hardly takes one minute and you are welcomed with a $5 welcome bonus. What are you waiting for? Go and get your first prototype order for free. Click on the first link in the description. In today's episode, you will learn how to make a long-range wireless industrial temperature monitoring system using Arduino Nano, NRF24L01 transceiver modules, industrial temperature sensor capable of measuring the temperature up to 1000 centigrade, and an I2C supported OLED display module. If for any reason the transmitter is turned off or the transmitter is not in the range, then connection lost will be printed on the OLED display module. There is a timer that monitors the data. So if the data is not received for one second, the connection lost will be printed. Then you can go ahead and check your transmitter side. You can also use the smaller NRF24L01 transceiver module on the receiver side. So it really doesn't matter whether you are using the smaller NRF24L01 modules or the bigger ones. If you are using the NRF transceiver modules for the first time, then I recommend you should start with the smaller NRF24L01 transceiver modules. So this is the wireless industrial temperature monitoring system which is very easy to build and if you watch this video from start to the very end I'm sure in the end you will be able to add multiple sensors on the transmitter side this way you can make some advanced level projects without any further delay let's get started Components and tools used in this project can be purchased from Amazon. The components purchase links are given in the description. These connections are same for both the transmitter and receiver sides. I added female headers on the left and right side of the Arduino Nano for the 5 volt and ground connections. I also added headers for the analog pins and the remaining digital and PWM pins. I added these male headers for connecting an external 5 volt power supply. I also added 4 decoupling capacitors to further ensure the smooth operation. So these connections are exactly the same for both the transmitter and receiver. Now let's take a look at the transmitter circuit. As you can see all the connections remain exactly the same. This time I added the MAX6652 which a thermocouple a temperature sensor is connected. The SO, CS and SCK pins of the MAX 6675 are connected with the Arduino pins 4, 5 and 6 while the VCC and ground pins are connected with the Arduino's 5 volt and ground. So this is the transmitter side. Now let's take a look at the receiver side circuit diagram. As you can see all the connections remains exactly the same 
This time I added the SSD13060 OLED display module. This is an I2C supported display module. The SCL and SDA pins of the OLED display module are connected with the Arduino's analog pins A5 and A4. A5 is the SCL and A4 is the SDA. The VCC and ground pins are connected with the Arduino's 5 volt and ground. I performed some basic experiments to confirm all the connections and when I was 100% satisfied I designed a PCB using the Catsoft Eagle schematic and PCB designing software. I added these extra holes on the left and right sides so this way you can solder other electronic components. I double checked all the connections and once satisfied I generated the Gerber files. For checking the generated Gerber files, I used the PCBA Online Gerber Weaver. After checking the top, bottom and all the layers, then finally I upload the Gerber files and placed in online order on the PCBWay official website. These are the PCBs I received from the PCBWay. As you can see the quality is really great, the silk screen is quite clear and the red color solder mask looks amazing. This is how both the circuits look after soldering. You can use any of these as the transmitter or receiver. I soldered female headers for the OLED display module. This is the receiver side and this is the transmitter side. Now I will connect MAX 6675 with the transmitter side. The SO, CS and SCK pins of the MAX 6675 are connected with the Arduino pins 4, 5 and 6. While the VCC and ground pins are connected with the Arduino's 5 volt and ground. All my connections are completed. Now it's time to take a look at the transmitter and receiver side programming. This is the transmitter side program and this is the receiver side program. As usual, before you start the programming, first of all make sure you download all the necessary libraries from our website electronicclinic.com. You can find a link in the description. First let's take a look at the transmitter side programming. I defined pins for the SO, CS and SCK pins of the MAX 6675. I also defined a variable temp1 which is of the type float. I also defined a unique pipe used the same also on the receiver side. The air data of the type byte is used to store the sensor's values. The number inside the brackets can be increased or decreased as per the number of sensors you want to use. Currently I am using only one sensor. I can still add 6 more sensors. I defined a timer which I will use to control the temp data function. Inside the while loop function I activated the timer and finally two instructions which sends the data to the receiver and print the data on the serial monitor for the debugging purposes. Temp data function is a user defined function and it has no return type. 
The purpose of this function is to read the temperature sensor and store the value in error at zero location. This function is called after every one second using the timer. Now let's take a look at the receiver code. On the receiver side, I added code for displaying the temperature value on the OLED display module and also added instruction for monitoring the connection. So if the connection is lost, a message is printed on the OLED display. The circuit diagram, libraries, Gerber files and programming can be downloaded from our website electronicclinic.com. I will provide a link in the description. I have already uploaded these programs. Let's watch this project in action. Support me on Patreon for more videos. I hope you liked today's episode. Like and share this video with your friends. See you in next episode and thanks for watching.